What's up everybody? It's good to see you. I don't know about you, but for me, 2021 was a year of significant change. I had closed the doors of my private practice, which I'd run for the last seven years, which was a very bittersweet moment. I packed up all my belongings. I threw my dog in the back of my car or placed him in the back of my car and uh, drove across the country and relocated to Southern California, which is where I am now. I also started this brand, Momentum Wad, uh, which has been a very rewarding experience for me. Uh, in light of that change, today we're going to be looking at a different branch of combat sports in our technique critique, where we're going to look at the kettlebell training and strength training routine of a combat sports athlete. We're going to break down the routine, letting you know what we like, letting you know what we don't like, and letting you know what you can take and utilize in your own strength training at home to better what you're doing and be safer while you're doing it. In today's technique critique, we are going to be looking at one of the best boxers who is in the game present day. We are going to be looking at none other than Vasily Lomachenko. Lomachenko is widely regarded as one of the best in the sport. He is a tactician in his game. His footwork is off the charts, his head movement, his speed. He is one of the greats that we have present day when it comes to boxing. The video that we're looking at today is a video of him strength training prior to his fight against Teofimo Lopez. There's a lot of kettlebell movements in today's workout, which I will break down for you and let you know what I think about the specific movements and the technique being used within the video. Also, before we get started, I want to encourage you to stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to let you know some of the changes that are happening here at Momentum Wad for 2022. Some exciting changes to our premium subscription, which I think you'll be interested in hearing. Without further ado, let's get started with Vasily Lomachenko's strength training routine. So the lead into some of the strength training in this video is Vasily kind of talking you through his mindset, talking you through his mentality leading into a fight. And it's, uh, it's pretty inspirational to listen to the focus and to the passion that he has for what he's doing. And he and his father are one of the few uh, father-son combinations as a coach and as an athlete where it's actually been really successful in the sport of boxing. Uh, a lot of these relationships combust over time and he and his father have maintained a really good relationship uh, in their pursuit of greatness and in their uh, accomplishments over the years. So it's pretty pretty cool to see that, uh, that team uh, flourishing uh, despite the adversities that they face as a, as a family. After my goal was uh, uh, to be pound for pound uh, boxer in the world. Okay, so let's start with the first movement he was doing, which was a push up to a dead clean, to an overhead press, to a sprawl. Um, you know, this is an example of a complex of movements that you can chain together to form one bigger exercise, which works your whole body. One of the many benefits of kettlebell training uh, that you cannot do with a regular piece of strength training equipment. It would be very difficult to chain something together like that with a barbell. Uh, whereas with kettlebells, it comes very naturally. It's a very fluid motion that will build entire body biomechanics and improve your quality of movement very smart uh, process. So Vasily is sitting here within a, a sea of kettlebells and he's performing a sit-up to a static overhead press. And we've seen this exercise once before in one of our past videos. We actually saw Joe Rogan doing the same exact exercise. This exercise I want to talk about in a little more detail and explore the reasons why you would might want to do this exercise and why you might not want to do this exercise. So first let's talk about the, the good things about this exercise and then I'll tell you about the other side of the coin here. So this exercise, he is in a lying position. The kettlebells are pressed in a static position up in front of him. So there's an isometric component to this movement and a strength component to this movement. From there, he's maintaining the bells in an overhead position and he is sitting up into a sit up. So you're going to be building shoulder stability and strength through this movement. 
and you're going to be developing what is called your rectus abdominis muscle. And we've talked about the value of the rectus abdominis uh, as a performance enhancing muscle in your strength training routine in our videos in the past, but I'll reiterate the point. So your abdominal wall exists in layers. Your outermost layer is that rectus abdominis. The innermost layers are your transverse abdominis, your internal and external obliques muscles. The deeper you go into your core, the more it's going to have to do with your performance, the more it's going to have to do with your stability, the more it is going to have to do with your ability to generate power. This movement and any crunching movement that you incorporate in your strength training routine are going to develop the outer layer of your core musculature, that rectus abdominis. So you really have to assess when you're performing a movement like this is the value of building a muscle that doesn't contribute significantly to your performance worth the risk of performing the exercise. When you're performing a movement like this, you're putting your low back into a flexed position under compression. And what that does is it perpetuates what are called disc injuries in the low back. You've heard of a disc herniation. That sort of thing will develop over time as a byproduct of performing a movement like this. So knowing that this does not contribute significantly to performance and knowing that it can lead to injury over time, it would not be a movement that I would recommend you incorporate into your strength training routine. I don't want to diminish the fact that this is likely a very difficult thing to do and there are benefits to doing it, but I don't know that the benefits outweigh the risks of the movement. So instead of doing something like this, the way I would approach the same goals uh, with a different movement would be performing what is known as the Turkish getup. We've talked about the getup in videos in the past, and I want to revisit that movement here today because it is one of the best exercises you can perform as a combat sports athlete or just somebody who's looking to move and feel better in their daily lives. So the get up, you're going to start in a lying position. Your arm is going to be extended out to your side at about a 30 to 45 degree angle. The opposite leg will mirror that movement. The leg on the side of the kettlebell is going to be bent with the heel close to the buttocks and the other arm is going to be strong and stable, pressing the kettlebell away from your body in a static position. From that position, you're going to drive through the down foot and push your body horizontally and up across to the opposite side of your body, directing that force to the down elbow. From there, you're going to be propped up. Your shoulders are going to be strong and stable, so you're not sinking into that position. You're going to pivot your hand and prop yourself up onto your hand so you're sitting in a tall position. And then from there, you're going to drive through the heel of the bent leg and the hand uh, that is down on the ground to prop yourself up into almost a tall kneeling position. From there, you're going to pivot your back leg. You'll be in a tall kneeling position. You're going to engage your feet into the ground so that you're strong and stable and you're going to move to a standing position from there. Notice that through this movement, your elbow should be strong and locked out overhead. If you find that your elbow is bending, you're either using too much weight or you're not paying attention to the details through this exercise. So, it's important that you take your time and that you make each step deliberate and intentional as you're working through this movement to get the most out of the exercise. It's not one that you should rush through. Now you're going to reverse the steps. You're going to step back into a tall kneeling position, so almost like a rear lunge movement. You're going to pivot that back leg. You're going to reach with your hand away from your body. From there, you'll step through. You'll pivot that hand back, move on to the elbow, and then back down into a lying position. Performing that movement, it takes a little bit of practice to get the steps right and to master those steps. But once you do, the inherent value within the exercise is astronomical. I cannot overstate how important this exercise is for a strength training routine, for combat sports, and just for the average person as well. So if that's an exercise you're not incorporating into your routine as of yet, it is one that I would definitely include that can provide significant value for you in your performance endeavors. So with that being said, let's get rid of the exercise that Vasily is performing and let's switch it up to a Turkish getup. Moving on. So we got more push-ups here. We're performing push-ups on top of two rings. So a lot of stability involved in that movement. We're back to our least favorite pressing movement. And now we're moving into something a little bit different. So Vasily is using his momentum 
to drive himself into a standing position. He's pulling the kettlebell overhead. So we got a little bit of lat engagement and shoulder stabilization occurring. He's moving to a standing position and then pressing the kettlebell overhead and then returning back to that lying position, rinse and repeat. Uh, this is a difficult movement, one that's definitely not for beginners. It's going to be working some mobility, some pulling strength, some stability, and some pressing power through the movement. So with this movement, because it's a, a momentum-driven movement, I have less of a problem with his performance of it, despite the fact that his low back is going into repetitive flexion, as I would with the previous aforementioned exercise where I think he was putting his back at significant risk. So because the momentum of the exercise is negating the amount of compression that is occurring in the low back, I think this exercise is actually fine to perform, but it's definitely not a beginner exercise. So it should be one that you perform if you are competent and comfortable with the mechanics of using a kettlebell. So, but all these exercises are really challenging and really impressive that he is able to perform them uh, in volume uh, with the technique that he's maintaining throughout this, this video. We got Vasily hitting the bag. We got hand speed, super impressive. It's always fun to watch really good strikers at work to see the the technique that's involved in what they do. You would think something like punching, it's like, oh, you know, anybody can do that. But it's so refined the way that a good striker does it that if you're tuned in and you know what you're looking for, it's amazing to see. So that does it for our technique critique with Vasily Lomachenko. His exercise routine was very kettlebell heavy. He had a lot of different kettlebell exercises incorporated into his strength training. And for good reason, we know the value of the kettlebell for the combat sports athlete. It is a implement that will provide you with functional movements that will not only build strength, but build power and build stability and conditioning all at the same time, which is likely why Vasily incorporates so many different kettlebell movements into his strength training routine. We noticed that some of the movements that he was performing were complexes where you chain together a sequence of exercises to form one fluid motion, which is one of the benefits to performing kettlebell exercises that you cannot implement when using a standard piece of strength training equipment in the same way. We said that we would change out some of the exercises he was performing to make them safer and more effective for his goals, but overall his technique looked pretty good. And the only thing I would really change, which we didn't touch on too much uh, outside of that one exercise was the technique he was utilizing when performing his dead cleans. Uh, but we've talked about that ad nauseum in some of our past videos, so I'm not gonna rehash that right here and now. With that being said, I want to thank you for joining me for this video. I want to thank you for joining me this year. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed doing this. I hope you have as well. I hope you found value in the things I've had to say in these videos. And if you have, I will continue doing them for you in 2022. Also, I ask you, if you have found value, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the things that I've talked about today. With that being said, I also want to invite you, the year 2022 is going to be a year of big changes for Momentum Watt. We are slashing the price of our premium subscription. We are going to be cutting the price more than half for you so you can utilize the systems that we have built for combat sports athletes and their strength training routines. We have kettlebell programs where you get a five day a week kettlebell prescription where you can take that, it's automated, you don't have to do anything, you have your strength training ready to go day in, day out for the low price now of $29 a month. If you are interested in that, check out the promo code in the description below. Take that promo code, head over to MomentumWad.com slash choose dash your dash membership and sign up for our premium subscription at its lowest price ever. I have greatly enjoyed doing this with you today. Until next time, I will see you in 2022.